Hello, everybody. Here we are. We're going to do Zechariah 4 and probably go through Zechariah 8 because a lot of them are not very long. So here we go. <clears throat> also, I want to say one thing before we start. If you remember last night when they brought up Joshua, I automatically thought it was Joshua who was Moses' commander of the army that went and conquered the Canaanites for their land, but it wasn't. It was uh, Joshua, the high priest. Now, if you remember in Haggai, and I'm going to go to it just so we can remember, uh, Haggai 1... Um, if you remember in Haggai, which was just two chapters, but the, the two chapters were about restoring the institutions of the Lord, namely the temple. But it starts out right here in one ver, uh, chapter 1, verse 1. It says, In the second year of King Darius, on the first day of the sixth month, the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai to Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, son of Josadak, the high priest. And he was continually mentioned in Haggai, if I remember correctly. They repeated it a few times. So this is the Joshua that Zechariah was speaking of, the high priest, because uh, Haggai and Zechariah were contemporaries. So they were in the same time period, and Joshua, son of Josadak, J-O-Z-A-D-A-K, was the high priest of the time. So, you know, the minute I heard the, the name Joshua, I just thought immediately, oh, this is, uh, you know, the Joshua. No, this was Joshua, son of Josadak, the high priest. And the reason that I forgot it was probably because Zechariah doesn't mention him that I remember, but they were contemporaries living in the same time. So let's go to Zechariah 4. <clears throat> then the angel who talked with me returned and woke me up like someone awakened from sleep. He asked me, what do you see? Now, if you remember, this was the angel of the Lord that was on the red horse among the myrtle trees and who was talking to him about craftsmen, etc. Matter of fact, let's just go back to Zechariah 3 and look at this vision one more time just to catch up with it. <clears throat> Zechariah 3. All right, so here we go. Um, actually, Zechariah 3 is not the one because that's the one about Joshua in the filthy clothes before the Lord and Satan accusing him. So we're going to go to Zechariah 2. <clears throat> that was the end of the vision, if you remember, was seeing Joshua in filthy clothes in front of the Lord and Jesus Christ standing up and saying, no, mm -mm, Satan, stop. All right. Um, no, oh, maybe it's Zechariah 1, because Zechariah 2 is the man with the measuring line. So here we go. In the eighth month of the second year of Darius, the word of the Lord came to the prophet. Uh, the Lord was very angry with your ancestors, and here's the original vision. Um... During the night, I had a vision, and there before me was a man mounted on a red horse. He was standing among the myrtle trees in a ravine. And if you remember, I thought that was end times talk, like the red horse of the apocalypse, and it's not. Um, <clears throat> behind him were red, brown, and white horses. I asked, what are these, my Lord? And the angel who was talking with me said, let me show you. They are the ones the Lord has sent to go throughout the earth. <clears throat> And they said, we've gone throughout the earth and found the whole world at rest and in peace. Uh, so the Lord spoke kind and comforting words to the angel. And then it said, uh, it went on and it said there were four horns. And he said, what are these? And the angel said, these are the horns that scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. And then he saw four craftsmen, and he said, The craftsmen have come to terrify the horns and throw these horns of the nations, uh, throw down these horns of the nations who lifted up their horns. 
against the land of Judah to scatter its people. So, okay, so now we go to Zechariah 4, and it says, Then the angel who talked with me returned and woke me up like someone awakened from sleep. So I'm not sure what that means. Like perhaps he's still in the vision and he was slumbering in the vision. I'm not sure. Or he's just saying, I don't know. He woke me up like someone awakened from sleep. He asked me, what do you see? Maybe he was shaking him on the shoulder. I answered, I see a solid gold lampstand with a bowl at the top and seven lamps on it. Now that is revelation talk. If you remember that John heard a voice behind him and turned around and there was the golden lampstand with the, you know, there were seven lampstands and, and there was a man walking among them. Do you remember that? All right, so here we go. I see a solid gold lampstand with a bowl at the top and seven lamps on it with seven channels to the lamps. Also, there are two olive trees by it, one on the right of the bowl and the others on the left. I asked the angel who talked with me, what are these, my Lord? He answered, do you not know what these are? No, my Lord, I replied. So he said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Now, this is a very famous scripture, and I want you to hide it in your heart. This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. Okay, what that means is it doesn't take might. It doesn't take power to win. It takes the spirit of the Lord, okay? What are you, mighty? What are you, mighty mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you will become level ground. This is the angel continuing to speak. Then he will bring out the capstone to shouts of God bless it, God bless it. The capstone would be Jesus Christ. Then the word of the Lord came to me. The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this temple. His hands will also complete it. This is talking about the second temple, which we saw the angel measuring out and explaining to Ezekiel in his vision in great and perfect detail. Then you will know that the Lord Almighty has sent me to you, meaning the angel coming to Zechariah. Who dares despise the day of small things? Since the seven eyes of the Lord that range throughout the earth will rejoice when they see the chosen capstone in the hand of Zerubbabel. So Zerubbabel apparently is going to put this uh, second temple together. And that's very famous also. Who dares despise the day of small things? We are not to despise the little things because all the little things get us where we're going. You can't have the big things until you've done the little things, okay? So do the little things really well. Lay your foundation surely. Think of each effort you make as a stone that you're laying in the foundation for your great temple. Not a temple honoring you, of course, honoring the Lord, but the temple that you build. It's just a picture I'm painting here. Okay, a temple or something that you're building for the Lord, or perhaps it's your ministry. The small things are each a little stone to put in your foundation. Make sure they're good, firm stones. Make sure they're well-made, well-shaped, and are going to fit with the other stones you lay. Okay, or perhaps they're the size of a brick. Perhaps they're the size of a large stone. Maybe your, your, your foundation stones are large, but do them well. Do them very well. Don't despise and say, oh, you know, all I'm doing is sweeping the church every day. Nobody sees me. The Lord sees you. And sweeping the church is, the, is that small thing that may be a very large stone for your foundation of what you're building unto the Lord. Do you follow me? Okay. Uh, who dares despise the days of the day of small things since the seven eyes of the Lord that range throughout the earth will rejoice when they see the chosen capstone. You can't lay the capstone without something else there. OK, it's got to be the other stones in the he's going to see the chosen capstone in the hand of Zerubbabel. When I asked the angel, what are these two olive trees on the right and left of the lampstand? Again, I asked him, uh, 
what are these two olive branches beside the two gold pipes that pour out golden oil? He replied, now I'm thinking maybe those are the um, channels that are coming from the lampstands, although I think it said seven channels, so I'm not sure what the gold pipes are. He replied, do you not know what these are? No, my Lord, I said. So he said, these are the two who are anointed to serve the Lord of all the earth. So let's go on. I looked again, and there before me was a flying scroll. He asked me, what do you see? I answered, I see a flying scroll, 20 cubits long and 10 cubits wide. So it was big. And he said to me, this is the curse that's going out over the whole land, for according to what it says on one side, every thief will be banished, and according to what it says on the other, everyone who swears falsely will be banished. The Lord Almighty declares, I will send it out, I'll enter the, it will enter the house of the thief and the house of anyone who swears falsely by my name. It will remain in that house and destroy it completely, both its timbers and its stones. Then the angel who was speaking to me came forward and said to me, look up and see what's appearing. I asked, what is it? He replied, it's a basket. And he added, this is the iniquity of the people throughout the land. Mm -hmm. Then the cover of lead was raised and there in the basket sat a woman. So this basket had a lead cover on it and it was opened up and there was a woman sitting in the basket. He said, this is wickedness, and he pushed her back into the basket and pushed its lead cover down on it. Terrible that a woman is used to depict the wickedness. Remember, the woman is the one that fell and then led her husband away. But are we blessed? When they put a baby on your breast after you go through labor, you will know that you were specially chosen to have children and that the Lord has blessed you and had compassion on you. So never be ashamed of being a woman. Don't let a man hate you for being a woman. Being a woman is the crown of the man. We were the final creation. He made man, but he fashioned woman. Okay, we are the crowning glory. We're not better than men. We are a helpmate or a help meet for him. But we did fall. And it's unfortunate that Solomon said, I looked through many women, a thousand women couldn't find one righteous woman. Out of a thousand men, he found one righteous man, but out of all the women, he couldn't find any. And then here we have a picture of wickedness as a woman in a basket with a lid of lead. So let's stay humble, ladies, okay? We are not less than, absolutely not. But let's just stay humble, okay? We're a powerful creation and we've got a lot of power of, of creation in our womb. And the Lord has made us a, 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 a queen, okay? When you, like I say, when that baby lands on your breast, you know that only women understand what that feels like. That's our gift that the Lord has given us, okay? So hear me and understand how I'm saying this. We're not a lesser creation, but we do need to walk circumspectly because we are a precious creation and we are woman, okay? So we don't treat ourselves like floozies or, or crudely, okay? We honor what we are. We're very special, but we did fall because we need that covering of a man. Now, I'm not saying to, please don't come at me with feminist stuff. I'm not saying a woman has to have a man. I don't have one. It would be nice to have one, perhaps, because they are a strength that I don't have, okay? So once again, understand me here. All right. So he pushed her in the basket, put the lead lid back on it after saying, this is, this is wickedness. Then I looked up, and there before me were two women with the wind in their wings. They had wings like those of a stork, and they lifted up the basket between heaven and earth. Almost makes you think that this is where the stork carrying, delivering babies came from. Where are they taking the basket? I asked the angel who was speaking to me. He replied, to the country of Babylonia to build a house for it. When the house is ready, the basket will be set there in its place. Uh-oh, sounds like punishment coming. Because remember, God will use people to punish 
his chosen, but then he will punish those that that attacked his chosen. Okay, so he, he covers every corner. All right. All right, Zechariah 6. I looked up again, and there before me were four chariots coming out from between two mountains, mountains of bronze. The first chariot had red horses, the second black, the third white, and the fourth dappled. That means spotted, sort of like smeared spots. All of them powerful. I asked the angel who was speaking to me, what are these, my lord? The angel answered me, these are the four spirits of heaven going out from standing in the presence of the Lord of the whole world. The one with the black horses is going towards the north country. The one with the white horses towards the west and the one with the dappled horses towards the south. Hmm. Didn't say anything about the red, did it? The four spirits, the black horses towards the north, the white horses towards the west, the one with the dappled horses towards the south. So it's left out red and east. Let's see what happens. When the powerful horses went out, they were straining to go throughout the earth. And he said, go throughout the earth. So they went throughout the earth. Then he called to me, look, those going towards the north country have given my spirit rest in the land of the north. The word of the Lord came to me, take silver and gold from the exiles, Heldai, Tobijah, and, Jed and Jediah, who have arrived from Babylon. Go the same day to the house of Josiah, son of Zephaniah. Take the silver and gold, make a crown, and set it on the head of the high priest, Joshua, son of Josadak. We just spoke of him. Tell him this is what the Lord Almighty says. Here is the man whose name is the Branch, capital B. And he will branch out from his place and build the temple of the Lord. It is he, and remember, he's under Zerubbabel. So these are the people that are going to oversee and do this work. It is he who will build the temple of the Lord and he will be clothed and he'll do it under the authority of Zerubbabel. Uh, he will build the temple of the Lord. He will be clothed with majesty and will sit and rule on his throne and he will be a priest on his throne and there will be harmony between the two. The crown will be given to Heldai, Tobijah, Jediah, and Hen, H-E-N, son of Zephaniah as a memorial in the temple of the Lord. I wonder if that's the prophet Zephaniah. Those who are far away will come and help to build the temple of the Lord, and you will know that the Lord Almighty has sent me to you. This will happen if you diligently obey the Lord your God. Okay, I'm going to stop there because I want to go over this in Enduring Word, okay? So let's look at a couple of things here. Enduring Word, uh, Zechariah 5. Let's just see what he says here. Now remember, this is it started with him being shaken awake by the angel. It says two visions regarding the cleansing of God's people. Oh, I should have done, gone to four. Sorry. All right. Zechariah 4, by my spirit, says the Lord. That was that scripture. By my not by might, not by power, by my spirit. All right. So the angel came and wakened him. It says, a man who is wakened out of his sleep. Zechariah had the woozy feeling that we get if we're awakened suddenly from a deep sleep. God gave Zechariah a vision of the golden lampstand that was meant to stand in the temple since Zechariah and his people were there to rebuild the, the temple. It made sense that God spoke to them in images related to the temple. Uh, in addition to the lampstand, he saw something that was never in the temple, two olive trees that supplied the seven lamps with oil through seven pipes or channels. Um, okay, so the, one of the more serious duties was the constant care of the lamps. The lamps were fueled by pure, specially prepared olive oil. Um, all right, so Zechariah saw the vision but didn't understand it. Uh, the angel made sure Zechariah knew that he must come to understand the meaning of the vision. 
uh, Zerubbabel was the civic leader of Jerusalem, okay, and had the responsibility to finish the work of rebuilding the temple. The work had stalled and Zerubbabel needed encouragement to carry on the work. And this is where it says, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit. Uh, might focuses on collective strength. Uh, let's see, not by, where does it say anything about power? Oh, okay. Uh, human might or power. Okay, might focuses on collective strength. But the spirit, oil is a good representation of the Holy Spirit, it says. Okay. All right. Then he sees, um, all right. He shall bring forth the capstone that shouts with shouts of grace, grace to it, or bless it, bless it. This was God assurance, God's assurance to Zerubbabel that not only would the work be finished, but Zerubbabel shall finish it, setting the capstone and declaring that it was all a work of grace. And we know when we create good things, uh, whether the Lord has enabled it or not, okay? And I'm going to tell you right now what a capstone is. Uh, a capstone is a stone fixed on the top of something. A large flat stone forming a roof over a chamber of a, a megalithic tomb. Uh, that's in archaeology, but uh, this is a capstone, okay? So, all right. So maybe the capstone isn't referring to Jesus. Let's go on here. Maybe it's just saying you are going to finish it. <clears throat> uh, for who has despised the day of small things or who dares to despise them? Zechariah's question rings true to us today. Um, almost every one of us could answer, I have despised the day of small things. None of us should. The question provides its own answer. None of us should despise the day of small things because God has a wonderful, though perhaps difficult, purpose. Um, it was a, a long day of small things for Zerubbabel. Okay. Um, uh, Zechariah might have said to God, what do you mean day of small things? I've lived with 20 years of small things. Even so, God, or Zerubbabel might have said to God, I'm sorry, not Zechariah. Uh, even so, God told Zerubbabel to not despise the time of small things. Because remember, God is speaking through Zechariah to the people, so it would stand to reason that Zerubbabel is hearing this. Okay. All right. I'm not going to belabor this point. I don't know. I don't know that we need to go on. Let me just go to Zechariah 5. Let's look and see what Enduring Word says about the woman in the basket that is being put in Babylonia. Let's just finish up there. Uh, God would cause the evil materialistic spirit to be returned to its starting place, Babylon. There it would eventually be destroyed. And that says the woman in the basket are returned to Babylon. All right, now was there anything else? Let's look in Zechariah 6. Oh, the, why is there no talk of the red horse? All right, let's go to Enduring Words, Zechariah 6. Um, four chariots, red horses, black horses, white horses. Um, it says that they're the same colors as the four horsemen in Revelation 6, the emissaries of God's judgment. Some connect these with the angelic messengers of judgment in Revelation 7, 1 through 3. Uh, what are these? They're the four spirits of heaven who go out from their station before the Lord of all the earth. And then, yeah, and it says here, let's see if he answers why the red horse isn't talked about. It, it doesn't say. I'd have to look that up separately, and I'm going to do that right now. Why is the red horse not talked about in Zechariah 6. Let's just answer this last question. Does anybody know what happened to the chariot with the red horse? Do they represent a biblical symbol? It says the interpretation of the vision of the four chariots is not exactly known. Some say it represents the four monarchies that were in Daniel's vision. Uh, yeah, okay. 
All right, there's no good answer, and I'm not going to keep you. I'll look into it a little more myself, and I'll bring you the answer tomorrow. I love you very much. We're going to go to Zechariah 7 tomorrow, okay? This is proving to be a very interesting book, and I forgot completely that there were visions like this in this book. So this is really neat for me, too. I love you. Pray for me. I'm praying for you, and I will see you tomorrow. Love you. Bye-bye.